Hey, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're gonna go over this half inch brushless HP compact drill from Ryobi. It's almost fairly brand new in the market. Uh, we've had it for a little bit. We're gonna go over this tool top to bottom. Stick with us. All right, y'all, so this right here is Ryobi's brand new HP compact brushless drill driver, okay? Um, as you can see, HP One Plus or One Plus HP brushless is supposed to be their high performance line in the compact series or whatever you wanna call it. Anyways, the point is, the model number on this is PSB DD01. If you buy it as a part of a kit, I believe the tool itself will call like PSB DD01CN or something like that. Um, if you buy it as a part of a kit, or if you buy it with two 1.5 amp hour batteries, it'll be PSB DD01K, right? You can also buy it with two amp hour batteries or three amp hour batteries and all kinds of fun stuff and also part of like bar larger combo kits and stuff like that. Anyways, the point is that if you buy it right now with this tool and two 1.5 amp hour batteries, which seems to be the cheapest kit you can get, it's right around 89 bucks, but the pricing is obviously subject to the change, holiday season, all that kind of fun stuff and whatever you get it in. The point is that what you gotta know is that this tool and some kind of battery that it's gonna come with, it's gonna be somewhere around 100 bucks, okay? That's what you really need to know. Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and take a look at the marketing height and then we'll bring you in closer and take a better look at it. So this is Ryobi's HP One Plus Compact 18 volt brushless half inch drill driver. It's compact in size at roughly 6.4 inches and lightweight. It has a brushless motor to provide longer runtime, longer motor life, and more power. Provides up to 400 inch pounds of torque. Has a two speed motor, which will provide zero to 400, 450 on low and 100, uh, 1,700 RPM on high, has a 24 position clutch, onboard LED to illuminate workspace, has a single sleeve ratcheting chuck, batteries have a fade free power and onboard fuel gauge. I guess that's really more about the battery. And this is part of Ryobi's H, uh, this is part of Ryobi's 18 volt one plus system, which includes over 225 cordless tools. And this tool features a standard Ryobi three year warranty. So this is the compact tool. So it all is 30% more compact and 20% lighter than its brushed model, okay? So that's what the marketing hype really says. Pretty much it's a standard tool that's lighter, smaller, more powerful. That's what it comes down to. So let's bring you in closer and take a better look at it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at these batteries, all right? So this is the 1.5 amp hour battery that we got when it came as a kit. Like I said, nobody sent this to us. We went and got this with our own monies. The model number on this battery is PBP002 and is a 27 watt hour battery and if you weigh the battery, or if you weigh the tool with the battery on it, it will weigh in right around three pounds. That's with the battery fully charged, okay? Where there's no point in talking about the tool only weight because nobody uses the tool without the battery. That doesn't make sense, right? If this is a three amp hour battery, this does not come in the kit. Um, the model number on this one is P191. This is a 54 watt hour battery. And if you use, if you weigh the tool with um, this battery, it will weigh in at a whopping three pounds, 12.2 ounces. So this is pretty much standard Ryobi coloring, okay? They made it look a little bit nicer or whatnot with more black and more HP and stuff like that. But this rubber over mode here is pretty standard Ryobi stuff. If you haven't ever used Ryobi stuff before, it pretty much feels standard like most other tools, but not as comfortable. It doesn't have as much cushion or grip or anything like that as you would see in like a, a Makita or DeWalt type tool, but it's it's pretty standard. Um, not, nothing really too much to fuss about there. It does have, it looks like what you would call like a uh, belt clip. Um, it obviously did not come with one, at least the kit that I got. I don't know whether it's just missing or just didn't get one. I just didn't get one, okay? The bottom part of it, as you can see here, um, is pretty standard where a battery would really go in. Nothing too much going on here, right? Um, and this is a stick pack, okay? So this stick pack, meaning this part has to go into where the handle is. So because of that, uh, the grip is a little bit bigger than some people like instead of a slide pack, but it is what it is, okay? There is a light here that will come on and stay on for a little bit, right? All right. So if you watch it, it'll stay on for a little bit. It's not super bright by any means, but it's nice to have one versus not having one, okay? Um, this one right here, as you can see, is 
Ryobi um, lettering is a better emblem. It definitely looks or feels better quality than you know their non-HP or high performance models, you know, the models that just have a sticker versus like rubberized branding and stuff. So this actually makes it look pretty sleek and nice. I'm not gonna lie to you, it actually feels pretty nice. Um, it has a four backward switch right there, obviously, and here is the variable speed trigger. Okay, I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. So on speed one, this is what it this is how it really works. And it does have fairly good uh, variable speed control. Right? Speed two. Okay. So there's that. Um, on the top here, it obviously has a one or two speed uh, gearbox selection. Um, it's interesting mainly because sometimes I feel that this uh, slider mechanism won't fully engage to two. Um, every once in a while when you're using it, we did get to use it for a couple weeks before this, reviewing this video. Um, it sticks like right there. I'm not sure how well it's gonna come out, but if you see right there, it doesn't look like it goes in all the way. So if you, that happens, you kind of have to just press it back and sometimes you just have to mess with it. Sometimes it doesn't work all the time. If that happens, sometimes you just move it around a little bit, right? And then it'll go through, right? So that's definitely something really annoying. Um, but I mean, we're talking about pretty much, you know, Ryobi tools, not to say anything bad about them by any means, but you're, this is not your top of the line stuff, right? Anyways, with that being said, let's go ahead and look at this chuck here, okay? So this is a half inch chuck. Uh, it doesn't look like it's a Jacob's chuck or anything like that by any means. But as you can look on the front of it here, it even has uh, embedded or engraved ways to turn it to this way to unlock. It's a half inch chuck, roughly around 13 millimeters. And it says, if you unlock it, go this way, okay? So the knurling is actually pretty good. The only real downside to this is that it's plastic, okay? And people who've used a lot of tools um, or in, in a lot of situations and stuff knows, plastic knurling will eventually fade away um, because it's plastic, right? So as it rubs up, like if you're drilling and it's rubbing up on metal or it's rubbing up on, you know, even wood, since this is plastic, this is gonna fade away pretty fast and the knurling the strength of the knurling will be gone, okay? So if you're using it fairly, you know, responsibly or whatnot, not abusing it or, or you know, not in like heavy duty construction or, you know, applications or whatnot, it's gonna be fine for the regular user, regular normal person, but for heavy duty use, plastic is not the way to go, so just keep that in mind, okay? With uh, the chuck or the, the clutch mechanism, it is a manual clutch mechanism. It will go from all the way from one, all the way to um, drill mode. So there's 24 or actually 23 if you look here. So it goes 20, 21, 22, 23. And then if you go to 24, it's pretty much drill mode, okay? And it does work generally pretty well. We use it to put up like drywall anchors and stuff, screw and type anchors. And you, I think we had it using somewhere around like, you know, I think it was like eight or 12, um, but it really depends on what you're doing. But you know, I'm not one of the per people who used to, you know, just drill it in all the way and just let the clutch engage. Most people just like to use, you know, variable speed, okay? All right, so on the back side here, like I said right here, PSB DD01CN. So I got this one as a part of a kit with the brushless impact driver, um, but the model number on this drill really is PSB DD01, okay? Keep that in mind. Um, nothing, nothing too fancy going on here. If you look at the back, there's a spot for a lanyard. It did not include one in the kit, but that's what you really get, okay? Actually, let's go take a look at the back here, right? It even says brushless HP, uh, one plus HP brushless. And this part is, you know, fairly rubberized. The fins, obviously you can see right here, nothing too much, but that's what you really get with the tool. All right, so now let's get some performance numbers. And in order to do that, we're gonna take two sets of tests, all right? The first set is gonna be taking this 5 16 inch by six inch lag bolt, screwing it down three times, get the uh, average performance number, then stepping up to this half inch by eight inch lag bolt, installing that three times, and getting the performance number on average, okay? So, why are we doing it that way? Mainly because peak power, you know, marketing hype that doesn't really get the job done. What really gets the job done is the power that the drill can deliver under load, okay? So, that's what we're really going to measure and using a time speed test, mainly on the highest speed it can, it can do it on, okay? Because that's what really matters to most people. So, now let's talk about the test just for a little bit. 
in order to do that, we set up pretty much, uh, we went ahead and got was a couple of uh, boards of five, or two by eight by 10 material, laminated it using tight bond, held, held it together using clamps and Timberlock screws, and it's been curing for right around three months, okay? So we're gonna try to use that for pretty much almost all the tests. Also, in order to do that, uh, we're gonna be using the socket adapters, but in order to get a good time, pretty much fair for all, almost all the tests, it's gonna be the timer is going to stop when the bottom or the top of this socket, depending on how you look at it, hits the lumber, okay? We're not gonna try to drag the lag in all the way because it's gonna be impossible to see when it really stops, okay? So that's what it's really going to do, and that's how we're really going to measure it, starting with the timer, all right? So, without too much further ado, Let's go see, look at the numbers. I hope you caught those numbers because those numbers did not go by too fast, okay? Anyways, we're gonna go over and do a recap. So with the 1.5 amp hour battery and this compact brushless HP drill, won the 5 16 inch uh, lag bolt test. First run came in at 8.20, second run came in at 7.47, Third run came in at 7.51. It obviously had to complete the test on speed one. And if you average out those three numbers, the average comes out to 7.73 seconds on average. All right. Moving on to the half inch lag bolt test. Um, as you already saw, it did not finish. So it did not complete. And because it didn't, we're just going to leave it at did not finish. All right. And remember, the tool weight with this 1.5 amp hour battery comes in at right around three pounds. All right. So now moving on to the three amp hour HP plus battery, since this is an HP plus tool, let's see if the numbers actually got any better, okay? First run on the 5 16 inch lag bolt test came in at 8.01. Second run came in at 7.20. Third run came in at 7.21. It still had to complete the test on speed one, and the average of those three numbers comes in at 7.47, all right? Moving on to the half inch lag bolt test. Even with the HP one plus three amp hour battery, it still did not complete the half inch lag bolt test. So we're leaving that one as did not finish. And in this configuration with the three amp hour battery one plus or HP plus battery, man, that gets confusing. The tool weighs in at three pounds, 12.2 ounces. Okay. so. Taking a look at those numbers, obviously, since this is the first drill in the lineup, this one is actually in first place with the uh, three amp hour battery. Second place, obviously, followed up by 
this um, Ryobi 1.5 amp hour battery, okay? There is obviously a performance improvement with a bigger battery as you would expect in most tools. And this is a OnePlus HP, so you know, it just makes sense to use this battery. All right, so what can we really say about this tool? This is a great tool. It's definitely a step up from some of the other Ryobi drills that we've used in the past. Is it the best, most powerful drill in the market right now? Probably not. Is it the most powerful drill on, in their lineup right now? Definitely not. Um, is it a good compact drill stack that has enough power to pretty much get all your punch list stuff done around the house? Probably. Would I go out and buy this tool right now? Most likely not. Um, we did buy this tool. Um, fair to say, nobody sent this to us. Um, we did go out and buy it. Um, we are in the Ryobi battery platform. We don't have too many of their tools, but we are in the Ryobi battery platform mainly because uh, my wife actually likes to use um, the uh, cordless hot glue gun, crafty stuff, right? And they probably make the best cordless hot glue gun on the market, right? So Ryobi tools sometimes it's almost, in, almost impossible to avoid because they have all these like niche tools, the things that people want or need, right? Like for instance, also the cordless clip fan that we use on the baby carrier and stuff like that, that always powers or powered by these batteries. So that's obviously been very good. So like I said, Ryobi tools is almost impossible to avoid because they have all that kind of stuff, right? So um, like I said, would I go out and buy this? Probably not mainly because I have other stuff I use all the time and work with my hands all the time. We're always building stuff, breaking stuff down, um, and you know, working in a trade. So that's what we do. So if you're doing that, I would obviously not buy this tool. Um, there's other stuff to do, but if you're looking at a video, if you're looking at, if you're watching this video to figure out if, cause you just bought a house and you want to, you know, punch this stuff done or you have stuff around the house you need to get done. This is probably a great tool for you. Okay. Mainly because, um, like I mentioned, according to versus all the other Ryobi drills that I've used, this is probably one of the best ones that I've used so far. Um, is it the, uh, drill you're going to use to, you know, poke like, a, I don't know, four inch hole saw. Definitely not. Um, there's other tools and stuff out like that for you, but Ryobi's done things very well by staying inside of this battery platform since like forever, as far as I can remember. Okay. And I remember we had a lot of Ryobi tools when they were, uh, blue, red, and, you know, orangish yellowish color. Right. And even the batteries at that time were, um, yellowish, uh, orangish, I don't even know what color you'd call it. It was called like a yellow color top, okay? Uh, and when the black battery bottom. So it's actually worked out pretty well. You know, Ryobi's still around. They're pretty much exclusively sold out the Home Depot, allegedly, the Home Depot house brand. You can look at it like that. And it's always available no matter where you go, right? And their batteries are not super expensive, okay? So this obviously is the second on the leaderboard right now. And this, is the first on leaderboard right now, but we'll have to go ahead and look at some of the other tools that we use on a daily basis to figure out how long this will really stay there. So stay tuned for more videos. If you have any more questions or whatnot, let me know. Other than that, have a great day and we'll see you guys next time.